Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth McCravey, a website designer and business coach for entrepreneurs and your host for the Breakthrough Brand Podcast, the show that's all about pulling back the curtain on how to actually build a successful business. I don't skim the surface around here. If you want a deep dive into the nitty gritty details of what it takes to run a successful business and stand out in a crowd, you're in the right place. After creating a multiple six figure a year website design business in my twenties, I'm ready to share everything I've learned and everything I'm still learning because I believe the keys to building a thriving business should never be a secret. Here you'll find episodes that are actionable, direct, and fun, like French chatting business over coffee and a fresh, honest take on the reality of being an entrepreneur. If you're ready to master online marketing, branding, website design, mindset, and business strategy, then this is the podcast for you. It's time to build your breakthrough brand. Let's do this. Hello, friends. In this episode, we are going to have some fun talking about how to have fun as business owners. So the crazy thing is that so many of us start businesses because we think it's gonna be fun, right? We maybe aren't enjoying our day jobs, or we want a side hustle to go along with being a mom or along with our nine to five, or we feel really, really passionate about an idea and we want to act on it. Whatever it is, though, like whatever the reason, we want to have fun with it typically, right? Like we think this is going to be a good decision. We think it's going to be something we're going to enjoy. But so often our businesses are not fun. They can actually become a total drag where we feel like a poorly treated employee in our own company and we are actually the bad boss that we hate. So if you feel like you haven't been enjoying your business lately, whether it's because you're stressed out or because you are being a bad boss to yourself, these are a few ideas to just put some fun back into your your business and to bring more joy into what you're doing. These are things that I have personally found help me when business is feeling a little harder. And I will say even before I get into these five ways, like sometimes business just is hard, right? Like we have seasons where it's harder, it's okay to cry, it's okay to be like business isn't going well right now. But if you're just feeling like business is a drag, and you're wanting to like, enjoy it more, these are things that are really going to help. But even as I share these, I do want to say, like, hey, business isn't always fun. Just like working a nine to five isn't always fun. There's a reason not everyone's a business owner, right? Like it's actually harder than most other things we could do. So yeah, that's that. But let's get into it. Five ways to have more fun in your business right now. All right, the first way to have more fun in your business is to go on a business dream date with yourself. So yes, take yourself out to a coffee shop or shut yourself away on your back patio with some wine or lock yourself up in your office and let yourself have some dreaming time about your business. This does not have to be a super long thing. It can just be like 30 minutes to an hour. But I find this to be really important because too often we get caught up in the hustle of our businesses. We're doing this, we're doing that, we're in the grind of it all. We're stressing about this. We're excited about that. And we don't stop to really think about where we want to go and what our goals are and to like appreciate what we've accomplished, all of that kind of stuff. And so this is basically a time to like pause, to pause and look at like how things are going, where we want things to go where we're trying to get to. So when I do this, I always commit to no email inbox open, no writing people back, no posting on Instagram, I might even like literally leave my phone in a different area of the room or not bring it at all. So I'm really wanting it to be time with me and my business high level. So keep your Instagram account and your inbox shut off, like literally quit the apps, whatever you need to do. And I like to have a few things I'm thinking about. So maybe it's just my vision for a new offer. Maybe Maybe it's ideas for how to solve a problem I'm dealing with, mapping out financial decisions, celebrating recent wins, brainstorming like what I'm wanting to work on next. It can be a variety of things. Maybe it's praying. Maybe it's talking to God about like, here's how things have been. Like here's like listening, talking to God about where things are going to go in your business. Like there's so many things you can do at this time. You want to do it frequently, honestly. Like anytime you do it, you're going to see 
like results and momentum typically. And for me too, when I do this, like I, I think about the most recent time I did this, it's helpful, just another quick tip with this, to go somewhere that's different than where you're typically working. So most recently, I actually sat on our guest bedroom bed with my laptop and I left my phone in the other room. And it was like, for whatever reason, being in the guest room where I really had never am was really helpful in kind of getting into the vibe of this. So if you want to try this, but you don't have something specific you want to like think through, one question I would say you could ask yourself is what do I want my business to look like by the end of the year or in five years, whatever range feels good to you and just kind of brainstorm some stuff. You could also ask yourself like what's been going well lately? Like what do I want to celebrate? What do I want more of in my business? So give yourself an hour to a few hours for this and enjoy yourself, enjoy your business and try to bring some joy back into what you do by just pausing, right? Like I said, we so often are caught up in the hustle of our businesses. Our minds aren't turning off. It's different than maybe the job you were working prior where like, when five or 530 hit, you were able to like, turn work off, we're often not turning our businesses off. And so it's always like you're thinking, thinking, thinking about all the things. So this is just a time to pause and think about the good brainstorm and really just kind of like be with your business, which sounds funny, but it is super helpful. Okay, a second way to have more fun in your business. And this one is like, Honestly, like, is this the biggest way to have fun? Maybe, I don't know. But making friends with other business owners. So running a small business, like many of us do, where it's online and everything's fairly digital, or if it's not digital and you're working with people in person, it's typically just you and your clients. It can get really lonely. You're not in the office with all these other coworkers where you have camaraderie over what you're doing. You're working alone in your home or from your kitchen table, and it does feel lonesome so often. And as much as they love you, often your friends who don't own businesses cannot get it with you when you're going through something hard, or they might struggle to understand and celebrate with you when you have a really big win. They just don't get it the same, which again, it's totally okay. They love you. They don't need to fully understand it to be your friend, but it can be helpful to have friends that also own businesses, helpful in having fun in your business. So ways to do this. I mean, gosh, so many ways. I mean, one, put a plug here, joining a community like Breakthrough Brand All Access, which is my business coaching membership. That's a great way to make business connections and make friends online. So they don't have to be local to you for something like that to add value to your life. Another suggestion would be to just message a business owner who's in a similar place in business as you and ask them to hang out. It could be that you're asking them to like meet up for coffee if y'all are both local to each other or it could be you're asking them to like meet for a Zoom date. They might say no, but they might also say yes, especially if you guys really do have something in common. Again, it could be that you're in a similar season of life. It could be that you're in a similar niche. You both work with similar clients. You're both brand new business owners, like whatever it is, a similarity there and a connection point and just like say, hey, like I'm looking for more business friends. Would you want to have a Zoom date and talk about business together? That can be a really, really great way. And for me, like I have a lot of friends who are business owners and a lot of them are not local to me. They are friends that are like digital friends where like this sort of thing of like interviewing someone on your podcast and like sitting and talking a long time after on Zoom or doing like the Zoom coffee dates or long Voxer chats is really helpful for like not feeling alone in your business and making business more fun because you're having someone to brainstorm with, you're having someone to talk about the wins with, and you have people who get it. My third way to have more fun is to hire a team. So on the same note of business friends, another way to make your business more fun is to be in it with someone else. So for me, and if you've listened to this podcast for a while, you've probably heard me talk about this, but I'm an introvert and I actually do enjoy working alone. I know a lot of people when they first start their business and they're like, maybe at home all day working with like less structure than the nine to five, they're like going crazy and they like need to see people and all that. For me, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love getting to be home. I love working alone in my office. I'm quite introverted and I get fueled by being alone. So I like that part. But even with with that being true, I can totally tell you 1000% I enjoy my business more doing it alongside a team of 
people where we're all on the same mission together. I can troubleshoot problems with my team. I can like celebrate wins. I can have help. Again, like troubleshooting problems is a huge one because when you're doing business alone, it really can like take the fun out of things when you're running into issues or big decisions. And you're like, I don't have anyone to talk about this with. I don't know like what to do. I want another second opinion. I want help with this. Like this is hard. Having a team can be really helpful. And a team, again, talked about team stuff multiple times in this podcast. So scroll through if you want thoughts on like starting hiring in your business, but it does not have to be some crazy like getting a W-2 employee that you're paying a full-time salary. It could be a contractor who's helping you in your inbox and also helps you brainstorm things sometimes. Like it does not have to be this huge process to hire someone. I'm also coming out with a course on Teams. So if you want info on that, elizabethmccravey.com slash Teams. Who knows if you'll listen to this in the future, it might already be out, but that link has some info about the course and um, a way to get on the wait list. So that's just a little side note I want to add here. If you're like, wait, I want more help with that. But I would say just hiring a team is a way to definitely have more fun in your business because you're not doing it alone. All right, the fourth way to have more fun in your business, this one is so big, so big. Stop doing the stuff you hate and following someone else's version of success. Gosh, I mean, those are those two things could almost be two different points, but I'm putting them together here because they both really relate. But how much unnecessary stuff are you doing in your business that you absolutely hate doing or, or just not good at doing, but you feel like you have to do because it's what quote unquote works or it's what someone else told you to do. So stop doing what you hate doing. Stop following someone else's version of success. You need to know what success means to you and what matters to your business. So some examples, just because that girl over there is doing influencer work and promoting products doesn't mean you have to. Just because someone else launched a course doesn't mean you have to become a course creator. Just because there's this new latest and greatest platform that you're seeing a competitor get on does not mean you have to be on it too. When you're constantly changing to a random version of success that doesn't actually align with your goals, or you don't even know what your own version of success is, you're not going to have fun. You might actually end up legitimately miserable in your business because your direction is just based on like what the latest guru is telling you what you need to do or what all your competitors are doing. So to bring it back up to like tip number one, even go on a business dream date with yourself that we already talked about and figure out what success looks like for you in the season that you are in and pursue that and like stay in your own lane focused on that and stop doing the stuff you hate, especially if you don't even think it's working for you and you're just doing it because someone else says you have to do it. Just knowing your own version of success. And I would say too, like, in knowing your own version of success, it's something you have to constantly reorient yourself towards. So like for me, I can get sidetracked on like, oh, wait, I could be doing this, I could be doing that, but they're doing this. That's a good idea. Should I do that? But staying focused on like, okay, what do I want my business to look like? What do I want my life to look like? What do I have time for in this season as a new mom? And focus on like what success looks like for me within light of all those things, right? So don't chase someone else's version of success. And then with doing things, you hate or aren't good at, that's sometimes something where like, if it is something that's like making you miserable in your business, but that you do need to be doing, maybe that's a time that you hire some help with it. So like, for example, maybe you've been doing your own bookkeeping and you're really bad at it and you're not sure if you're doing it right and it's confusing and stressing you out. That could be a time that you hire a bookkeeper. Maybe you're editing your own podcast and you're like, this is really, I don't like re-listening to my audio after I record it and I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. It's taking up so much time. It's double the work. Maybe it's time to hire a podcast podcast editor. So there's a lot of different examples of how sometimes it's something that has to be done and you hire someone. Other times it's something that you could totally quit doing because it's not actually helping your business and you're only doing it because you think you have to. And it might be something that like you need to stop doing because that's someone else's version of success. It's someone else's version of marketing that you can just quit on. So that's number four, stop doing the stuff you hate and following someone else's version of success. And lastly, this last one, I don't have much to say about 
But I think it's so true. We can take ourselves too serious sometimes in our business. So let yourself be goofy. Business does not have to be so serious, especially in the type of business that most of you guys are running. A lot of you guys listening have personal brand businesses like myself, where you can bring the fun into it. And even if it's not a personal brand, having a brand and business that is fun, inviting and goofy at times could really like speak volumes in terms of attracting your ideal clients. So share funny stories, share that meme you liked that your audience might like too on your Instagram stories, tell stories from your personal life in your emails, use GIFs on Instagram and your emails and your client messages, whatever it is. Be yourself, whatever that like version of yourself is, like show up as yourself. You're going to create a way more compelling brand that way than if you're just molding into like, it has to be this certain way. So let yourself be goofy. Let yourself have fun. Let yourself laugh alongside your audience and be yourself. And for me, like being myself means like being goofy sometimes, sharing funny things, laughing alongside you guys about funny emails I get or funny like pranks I play on Adam, my husband, like whatever it is, let yourself be goofy sometimes and have more fun in your business by being yourself and showing up and showing your personality. So that's it. Those are my five things. This was a shorter episode that I hope just like gives you some ideas to truly enjoy your business more. Because again, growing a business, it can absolutely be fun. And at the same time, it can also absolutely be miserable if you're being like, a bad boss to yourself and create, make it harder than it has to be, not allowing it to be fun. So I hope these things give you ideas for how you can make business more fun and enjoyable for yourself. So that's it. And I do want to say to close here, if you are looking for a community of other business owners to like have that making friends element with, or you're looking for coaching from me on like any of this stuff on marketing, your business scaling it, all of that, I want to encourage you to check out Breakthrough Brand All Access. It is my monthly membership that includes coaching community and content to help you grow your business. The doors are closed right now as I'm recording this, but they will be opening again soon. So you can get on the wait list at elizabethmccravey.com slash BBAA. And that page on my site too will give you a bit more information about it. And feel free to email me too. If you're like, I have a specific question, when are the doors going to open? You want more info? Um, you want more details on like how to get help from me in your business? Send me an email, hello to elizabethmccravey.com. And I would love to see you guys join our community inside Breakthrough Brand All Access. All right, that's it. And I'll be back next time with more tips to help you build your breakthrough brand. Thanks for listening. If you love the Breakthrough Brand Podcast, then you need to join me for the next level inside of my membership, Breakthrough Brand All Access. Inside of All Access, you get coaching calls with me where you can ask me anything and get help with your specific business. If you've ever felt like you want me to be your business coach, you want my take on things, this is your way to do so. You also can get access to our amazing community. Seriously, I can tell you they are the greatest where you can collaborate, get feedback and make friends as you grow your business together. And on top of all that, you get additional trainings from me that help you build a sustainable, scalable business. You'll be able to take the things you learn from this podcast and apply them to your business alongside myself and a collaborative group of other business owners. You can get all the details and all the info about joining at elizabethmccravey.com slash BBAA. The doors aren't always open, so they aren't right now. Just get on the wait list to be notified as soon as they open up again. So thank you for being here, friend. Thanks for listening all the way to the end. And I hope to see you soon inside of Breakthrough Brand All Access. Again, the link is elizabethmccravey.com slash BBAA.